Come on in here, son. Woo! About tore my light wire up, but I did catch one. <laughs> There's a little spinnerbait bass right here at Roosevelt Lake. You know, a lot of times during the early spring, and that's what we're here is during early spring. I would call it late spring, but the fishing hasn't been usual this year, as usual. But what I've decided to do is, you know, we work on main lakes a lot and I love to get up in the clear water and see if they've moved up, things like that. And, you know, we got a lot of, of the little males roaming up in the shallows, but I've, I've come back into a river area where I have a channel that runs through and decided, you know what? I'm gonna go see if I can put myself in a little bit deeper water. My boat will sit off in, you know, anywhere from 16 to 23 foot of water and then toss up to some of these shallow brush piles and stuff and see if I can get some fish going. We got a little bit of breeze on the water, so I'm gonna obviously throw a little bit of a spinner bait and just see what's going on. We might have to flip. We'll see what happens. We might have to throw some different baits in here, but you know, the water's a little more off colored too, so it makes a spinner bait really fun to throw. And uh, just chunk and wine, chunk and wine. Sometimes that's what you have to do to find fish. And on Roosevelt, they're moving daily, so you got to try to keep up with the pace of what's going on. So what we're going to do is try to find some transitional areas that I think the fish will start moving up into and uh, see if we can catch a few of those bigger fish. We can catch a lot of those little smaller fish, you know, up shallow right now, but I've kind of put myself in some positions where some areas, I'm going to try to do that today where we might be able to pick up a few bigger fish. There's a good one. There's a good one on that spinner bait. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit bigger fish. Come out here on that. Come on, buddy. Oh, he's got my spinnerbait all tore up. I'm using a light wire spinnerbait. Come on, come on, come on. Ah! <laughs> he hit right at the boat. The thing is, is where I'm fishing, the area, look at that. A lot better fish right there. A lot better fish. See you, buddy. Look at what he did to that spinnerbait. <laughs> uh, where I'm fishing is a channel. I'm just going right alongside the weed line because like I said, with me sitting out deep, there's a lot of shad and gizzard shad running through this channel. Then up there where all this brush is, it's shallow water. So they have a chance to get shallow if they want to spawn and, and get up shallow, but then they've got that deep water access and that's important to these fish, especially this time of year. 
Those bigger fish, you have to remember in the springtime, they're waiting to move shallow. I gotta retie. They're waiting to move shallow um, for the spawn. But big fish, those big fish always like to find a place where they have deep water access to. So keeping my boat out and paralleling or throwing up into this brush pile up into shallow water and then bringing the bait deep really helps. A slow roll is all I'm doing. Now the ticket is, I'm throwing a half ounce spinner bait. You don't need to throw a one ounce. Half ounce is good in this area. Three eighths ounce if they're shallower. But when I start slow rolling and want to get it down there a little bit deeper where fish like that live, you want to throw like a half ounce bait. I team that up with some 17 pound test fluorocarbon line. And uh, you want to go at least 17 when you're throwing in this stuff, sometimes 20. You can get away with 20. Uh, I feel like I get a smoother cast, a, a lot nicer cast with the 17. If I was breaking 17 off, I'd go to the 20, but I haven't had that issue. And, and 17 is usually pretty good. I can get in some pretty rough stuff with that, and I'm pretty good with that. So, and it allows the bait to fall a little bit farther down when I'm slow rolling it, so that's key. Medium heavy rod. You want a medium heavy? I'm throwing my Taipan medium heavy action spinnerbait rod here. And uh, it's got a nice little tip on it, and, uh, but it's got some backbone on it where I can really set the hook. So that, that part of it's really key to catching these fish. I teamed that up with a Johnny Moore Signature Series uh, bait cast rod, a reel, that's uh, 6.3 to one, and it's perfect uh, reel speed for a spinner bait. I can burn it, I can slow roll it, and I, I really do well with this particular reel. And you can see it's got a good spool on it and puts a good line on it. It's just a stout reel. There's one. There's a good one. Slow rolling that thing off there. <laughs> that was not a bad fish. We'll take him all day long. Look at that fish, folks. Come on, buddy. <laughs> You're done. Come on. Come on. Gotcha. Nice. Little speedy beat this. Look at that. <laughs> yep, we came alongside of a little bit steeper, rocky area. And, uh, you know, with them moving up, things like that, I'm still using that half ounce bait. Figured I'd get in some of these cuts. You know, these fish are gonna start moving back into that stuff back there. I'll tell you what, man, going along some of this rocky stuff like this, you got a good chance of catching some nice fish. One thing very important to remember, especially with a light wire spinnerbait or any spinnerbait, this arm gets twisted when you catch a fish. You wanna make sure it's right over the hook and it's gotta have that clothespin effect. And the reason why you want it right over that hook is because if it's not straight and it's curved a little bit to one side, your spinnerbait will have a tendency to roll and go from one side to the other. So, you know, you wanna be sure that you keep that the blades directly right over top of your hook. Now, another thing is if you're slow rolling the bait, a lot of times your wire can be a little bit wider like that or you can bring it down just a little bit. What happens is, is if, you, if you have your wire spread apart, if you try to fast retrieve it, it's gonna roll as well. So you wanna make sure that if you're, if you're gonna fast retrieve it, which we're not doing, we're slow rolling today, you can bring that wire down a little closer to the hook and it won't roll on you when you're, when you're speeding that bait through the water. If we were coming over the tops of trees and things like that, we'd wanna get that, the blades a little closer. But right there's a good, good looking bait. Just make sure it's not all bent up. Got him. Got that one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, son. <laughs> Come on. Now that there is a little Ica bass. Look at that. 
not a giant fish, but here's the deal. <clears throat> we got off some of that other area. The wind, as you can see, it's calm. We went for an hour or so with that spinner bait and never got bit again. And so the wind died down, which is okay. So I know these fish have to start moving shallow. So we're gonna start hitting this, these find bushy areas, a place that looks like a good spawning area and just start throwing that Ica. You can do it with a Cinco as well, but that Ica, I'm hoping will get some bigger bites for me, but hey, I'll take what I can get on a, when it's tough. <clears throat> But we're gonna go down through here and see what we can't find. Again, we're heading down towards the back of the cut. And we'll see if we can catch fish. We came out to a little bit clear water. When you throw uh, weightless stuff, like say the Ica, let me see if I've got it here. Okay, when you're throwing the Ica, it looks like a little bug and I'm throwing it weightless. Throw it on a four out wide gap hook. I use an owner wide gap hook for that. And the, the ticket is you just throw it out there just like you do a regular Senko and let it fall. And this little bait is small enough, but it's big uh, and thick, but boy, the fish just love these things. And I've caught a lot of fish on them. And a lot of people are throwing those Senkos and they work great. There's nothing wrong with those, but man, something just a little bit different sometimes. You can get that, that bigger bite. And so, I don't know, we're just trying to get bit right now and I know the fish are starting to move shallow and I know a lot of little tiny guys are gonna be right on the shoreline, but I wanna fish some of this brushy stuff, see if something's out there, maybe we can catch something big there. Got him. Oh, he came off. Oh, he came off. <laughs> he wanted me up. <laughs> That was a fun little, I just didn't get a good, I wasn't ready for that bite. I rigged this bait up backwards, okay? And uh, that way the little tentacles as you pull it kind of flare out a little bit. So I'm using that big four out hook, see how far back it goes? And then I just skin hook it where the hook's buried a little bit, right where the hook can come out, but you can bring it through the brush without getting hung up. That's the way you hook that up. That's the way I hook it up to throw it in the big brush piles and stuff. There's other ways of hooking it up where guys put the hook up front, have a little uh, screw lock in there, and have the hook exposed. But I worry about getting hooked up in this too much. It's, I'm using it more of, a, more of a getting up into the junk. You know, there's a few different colors I like for this. Green pumpkin and watermelons, my, my two favorite. Those are the ones I go with with this particular bait. Uh, there's a bunch of different colors out there. Maybe in your lake, you might have certain colors that work great for you. And I would suggest those might be the ones you might use watermelon red flake or whatever. But this is, this is the two colors I predominantly like. Anywhere I go, I know I can catch fish on the lakes is that either a green pumpkin or a watermelon black flake. So those are the two colors. A couple of things to mention about this bait. You really got to set the meat to them. It's almost like you're jig fishing because you got that big gnarly hook on there. And so I'm throwing 17 pound test four carbon line. I'm throwing a heavy action. You wanna throw your heavy action. Uh, this is a Taipan rod uh, and a good 6.2 to one ratio. I'm using the Johnny Morris uh, Signature Series reel. <clears throat> it's a four aught hook, big old wide gap gnarly hook that I'm using. And the reason why I'm, again, why I'm doing that is so I can get it in the brush or let it fall down in the middle of a brush pile and I don't have to worry about it getting hung up. Uh, unless it's hung up on a fish. But when you go to set the hook on this thing, you might see your line taken off. You don't wanna barely or start reel setting. You can't do it with this particular bait. You gotta set it just like you're jig fishing or something and really set the meat to them. Oop, got him. Oh, that's a good one. Hopefully, oh, a little bit better fish. <laughs> Right along that wall back there by that tree is a perfect spot for a fish to be for that Ica. Get on in here, son. <laughs> oh, they're moving up. It feels so good to, to be able to come out and catch some fish and have some fun. It's been a long winter. I know for a lot of people fishing that deep, I, you know, put the spoons away. It's, uh, it's time to start fishing shallow. That's always fun too. The kids love it. You know, and these are weightless baits and, and weedless, so a lot of times 
even your kids don't have a problem throwing this particular kind of bait you can throw this on a spinning outfit as well um, you need a heavier action spinning rod obviously but this you know this is a lot of fun a lot of fun to do i felt him hit that bait i'm just tossing right up against that wall and i knew with all that brush back there there had to be a bass back there Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing really important, a lot of guys have a lot of different graphs on their, on their boat, and which is awesome. But when you're shallow fishing like this, if you really don't need your, 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 all your graphs on, especially when you're eye, visually seeing what's going on and you're fishing shallow water, you can eliminate a lot of the noise in your boat. Number one, turn your trolling motor down. Number two, Shut a few of your graphs off. The only one you really need is the one you're looking at, which is probably the, the front graph, so you know your depth and all that. But maybe having just one graph running, it really makes a difference. All that pinging down there spooks the fish. They get up here early in the season, and I'll tell you what, when you see them and you're trying to get on top of them and you got everything running, they hear that, and it spooks them. And it could take you that much longer to catch the fish, or you may not even get bit at all. So it's a great tip of the week. Put on to one graph. Sometimes if you can get by, I sometimes I shut them down if I'm real shallow and I'm, I'm bed fishing or something. But just moving in shallow in, in what we're doing, you really want to kind of shut everything down and maybe have one graph running and, and go that route. That'll help you. Great tip of the week. Got that one. Wouldn't let that one go. I set the hook on that dude. <laughs> he wasn't that big, but whoa, my line started taking out. I'm like, he ain't getting away. I'm setting the meat to him. Look, <laughs> I got him. Oh, tired of getting caught off guard. <laughs> oh my goodness. How fun is this Ica? Oh, let me tell you something. One of the reasons I like this bait and fell in love with this bait wasn't just because I, well, it is because I caught fish on it, number one, but Number two, I know that a lot of guys, and the sinkles are so popular this time of year. Everybody's throwing them, just like the drop shot. Everybody's throwing it when it's drop shot season. And uh, you know, you can, out, you can learn to outcast people, get better casts into the trees with the same bait they're throwing and go behind them. But I grew up uh, fishing small water and littler lakes. And we had a bass club and and I grew up doing that. And I'll tell you what, we're following each other around the lake, following each other around the lake. And granted, you know, making sure your casts are better than theirs or whatever you have to do when you're going behind somebody because they've already kind of hit the water. Uh, we call it used water. Uh, you Sometimes you just got to come up with something a little different. What I loved about this bait is it's got a little bit different profile, obviously, than the Cinco. So when guys are up in front of me throwing that Cinco, I can throw something a little bit different at the bass that they haven't seen yet. And uh, I think it offers you a chance to get a bite that you wouldn't normally get if you're throwing the same thing they're throwing and the bass saw that and just kind of goes by it. talking about son that's the kind of fish I want to catch <laughs> oh it's a big small mouth look at that what a way to end my day big old small mouth come in here baby I promise I'll let you go I promise I'll let you go come on <laughs> look at that Roosevelt small mouth come here And I'm telling you, look at that, popped right out. Look at that beautiful small mouth, huh? Isn't she, that's just a great looking fish, man. I love small mouth fishing. Roosevelt Lake, I just haven't been able to catch as many throughout the years as they used to be in here. We'll let this baby go. <laughs> Even the Ica catches small mouth. Let me tell you, I've had a great time on the show today, folks. You know, Roosevelt Lake's getting better. We went through a, 
a period of time here where this lake was getting, it was tough there for a while, but uh, it's getting better. It goes through its phases. And uh, right now the phase is, is the fish are starting to move up a little bit. So move up with them, have a little fun, get out, try this rig. You're gonna have a lot of fun with it. And I promise you, you'll catch fish as long as you can toss it right by a bush somewhere. Eventually you'll get bit. Thanks for joining us on the show. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>